So I was in my world history class. And I remember spending the entire year sitting in this classroom and my school was predominantly white. I was one of the few black kids in my classroom. And, and sitting in this world history class and learning about Asia and the Ming Dynasty and the kings and queens of Europe and learning a little bit about American history. And I remember waiting anxiously to get to a conversation about civilizations on the continent of Africa, which my mother had always impressed upon me that that's where our roots were and that's where we were from. And I remember the teacher getting to that chapter and saying, oh, we're gonna skip Africa because nothing really important really happened in Africa and turning to the next chapter and just moving on as if the continent of Africa didn't exist and there was nothing really to speak about in terms of history and the contributions of African people to our world. One, a wave of disappointment that uh, here was my opportunity to learn something about myself and I would not have that opportunity, but also this wave of heat and just shame, I guess is a good word, because I was sitting in a class with a group of people who we talked about their history. And here I am, the lone black kid sitting in the classroom. And not only had she told me that I had no real heritage or legacy or my people really didn't con contribute in any meaningful way to the world, but she'd also told everybody else in the room that. That was embarrassing to me, to sit there in that space and just have to have that weight on me as she just skipped to the next chapter. I quickly realized that schools are set up oftentimes for certain kids to succeed. And teachers are a powerful, powerful agent in that work. And, and so what ends up happening is children that don't fit into the, the framework for those schools or fit into teachers' expectations about who's valuable are often overlooked. And I felt it firsthand what it means to be overlooked by my teacher and my school. And I don't know if I decided right there I was going to be involved in education, but I decided right there that I never want to feel this way again. And I don't think it's right for anybody to feel that way. I love teachers. I guess I should say that. It's, it's my passion. I spend 80% of my time working with teachers. You know, I, I run the Krim Center at Georgia State, named after Dr. Alonzo Krim. And Dr. Krim had a statement. He used to say the teacher is the curriculum. And I think in some ways we've moved away from that. We're trying to do things that are teacher-proof. And so my belief is that there's nothing better than a well-trained, prepared teacher that understands their children, the communities that they come from, the languages that they speak, their values, their beliefs, their cultural norms. Um, it allows them to connect with children in a way that a teacher that doesn't know those things just can't do. But the other piece is, what are the ideas that you're bringing into your classroom about your role and your responsibility to your children? So for instance, um, as a teacher, do you see education as a political act? I do. Education is definitely a political act. I mean, it's activism in, it, in, in its greatest form, right? You're, you're educating people. You're helping people to see themselves and to see the world differently. And that's a political act, in my opinion. But teachers don't see themselves that way and see themselves basically as agents of this system we call education and that I have to teach what's in the textbook and never break away from that, never engage my kids in really answering critical questions that are important to them. Um, I think those are the teachers that can do harm to children. So I think there is a value in those teachers that see themselves as artists, that are constantly practicing their craft and getting better every day. Teachers that see themselves as responsible for their children and their education, and see themselves as activists and people that are, are, are growing the next generation of leaders and critical thinkers and artists and dreamers and actors and builders. I think those are the great teachers and those people we need to see in our classrooms. Visit southerneducation.org for this and other stories as we advance a new narrative on public education in the South. Connect with us on Twitter and Facebook and join the conversation using hashtag SEF 150 Voices because it takes more than one voice to reimagine education.